Hey, it's Doug Belshaw. I want to show you how to use Trello for Kanban. So once you've logged into Trello.com, what you can do is you can see all of the existing boards that you've got. So here's mine. Uh, as you can see, I've got some for various clients. I've got some for personal stuff, etc. We're going to create a new board. I'm just going to call it Kanban. You can add that to an organization if you've got one, just to organize your boards. And also you can change how private it is. So you can make it entirely personal to you and to people you invite. You can add it to an organization, which is a paid for feature, or you can make it public. I would encourage you to make it as public as possible unless you've got commercially sensitive information on there. So once you've created your Kanban, the key and central part of Kanban are three lists. You're gonna to need to do, you're gonna need doing, and done. In addition to that, things which I found helpful in the past, is having a stalled list. That's for stuff which just seems to reside for everyone to do. Put it on stalled so people realize there's some kind of issue. Um, and also have one for useful or current links. Um, so that's stuff which is a useful for the meta level of the, of the project and you don't just want those links in particular cards. You can see this menu on the right hand side that shows updates of, of what uh, has happened and who's done what when. Um, the idea is that, whoops, the idea is that what you do is you get cards which move from to do to doing to done. So for example, I'm going to give an example just from my home life this weekend. So trim hedge. Now trim hedge has an action to it. You know how whether it's done or not by the end of it, which is important. We can also break it down into subtasks. So I could just have a checklist of get hedge trimmer from outhouse. So here, there's some, some things which you might get done. And as you go along, you can tick them off, um, etc. That's a checklist. You can also, and you can see when you've done that, I've got two out of six items done on that list. You can also add labels. So you can have all different kinds of colors. Uh, as you can see, if you click on, on there, it adds it to it. But if you click on here, you can edit it. And there's all different colors there. I've turned on the colorblind mode, which is quite useful, even if you're not colorblind, because it differentiates it a bit more. So writing, for example, or um, manual labor, as this one would be. There we go. And if I add that onto there, you can see that that's now got that color. Um, let me just show you my personal one, because this has got some of the labels which I use all of the time. Um, I've come to the stage where these labels for me are the most useful. So writing, editing, researching, collaborating, reviewing, and planning. I find those labels for me the most useful. However, when I'm working with someone else, let's say, I don't know, Brian Mothers, then the ones that we've got are things like creating, editing, reviewing, planning, discussing, researching, researching, and collating. So different labels for different projects. So back to the Kanban board. As time goes on, once you've um, started doing these things, you should move on to doing. Um, and then once you've done it, once you've finished all these things, um, you're then going to move it on to done. There we go. Um, let's say you've got loads of these things in the list. You should review them every so often. So this list, this done list is full of all different things that you've done. What you should then do is click on here and archive all cards in this list. So they're still there, they're just archived, and you can search for them here. So if I type in hedge, um, there we are, it's still there, it's just archived, as you can see. All right then, so some of the stuff that you can do. Well, if you go into the menu, it shows you who's done what when. You can add members to the board, so I can add, I don't know, Brian to this board. There we are. So I did that. I'd add them to that board. I'm not going to do it at the moment. But you can add lots of different people to the board. Also, if you go to Menu and go to Power Ups, this is part of Trello Gold, you can change the background. So at the moment, it's default to blue. You can change the colors if you want to. You can add photos um, and patterns and textures. So I quite like this Lego one. But you can also customize it as well. Another thing you can do is you can go to Power Ups and you can add various functionality. So I really like card aging because it shows if nothing's happened to a card for a while, it visibly shows that. Um, you can have it so it just becomes more transparent, but I quite like the pirate mode where older cards crackle and tear. 
If you, another thing you might want to do with this kind of board is you might want to like have an ideas board. So let's say you add um, ideas as a list at the end. And I can move that across, as I can with cards and stuff. So ideas here. Um, I might want to put, do this thing and see whether people think it's a good idea. Well, if I've enabled um, voting on here, on my power-ups, and see who's available to, to vote, then when I go onto here, then people can go on to vote and they can vote that up and I can see that that's got one vote. So in the same way you might want to use Google Moderator, something like that, where you can vote things up and down, you can use that as well. Um, there's various other options which you can go through. There's lovely stickers and all sorts of stuff. If you've got Trello Gold, which I might want to use, you can drag these onto various cards. It makes it look nice, makes it a bit more visual. Um, but that's basically how to get started with Kanban. You need some kind of to-do list, doing and done, and I've suggested you might want an ideas one, as well as stalled and useful links. All the information in terms of who's doing what shows up here on your menu, and there's mobile apps, so you can have a go um, while you're moving about as well. So that's how, start, how to get started with Kanban for Trello. It doesn't presuppose any kind of development methodology. You can still use your traditional uh, waterfall charts or you can go with full kind of scrum and agile. Whatever you want to do, it's just a very visual way of showing other people who you're working with what's front of mind for you at the moment, what you're working on, um, and when your to-dos are due. Oh, I didn't mention when the to-dos are due. So to do that, you just have some kind of activity. So do this thing and you'd go into here and you'd go to a due date. Due dates are really important because otherwise they're just um, aspirations rather than goals. So I might go into July and I might say, okay, I want this done by Friday the 10th. I've got my labels on there, members and checklists and stuff. You can also add attachments. Now, if you add an attachment that's a picture, what you can do is you can make it show up as an image to, as a, as a preview. So I don't know, this, what have I got? Dilbert cartoon. I'm just gonna use this as an example. Once it's uploaded, it'll show up here. And then when in the preview, you can see that there. That's quite a nice thing to do, just to differentiate between different uh, things to do, projects, etc. Okay, I think that's, that's me done. But um, I will improve on and um, extend this video at some point in the future. That's just a very quick overview to show you some Kanban and how I set up my bot. Ciao for now.